All right, welcome back to Backcountry Amateur Radio, guys. I'm um, taking advantage of this opportunity to be way up here. I'm uh, doing a soda activation with ham radio. But I brought this GMRS unit. This is the GM30 from Radioidity because I finally need to do some stuff with it. I've got some other footage, but honestly, you can see I did. <laughs> this is a custom Abri. <laughs> Uh, honestly, I couldn't get the SWR very low. Oh, got some dudes on FRS radios, I think. Um, kind of, uh, you know, if you're if you're using FRS, if you're on the air, you know, there's kids listening. Uh, please use clean language. Um, these guys have been going at it. So, anyway, I was scanning and I came across uh, FRS channel uh, 18 was uh had these guys on it and they're sounds like they're working on a truck anyway um i just wanted to take a minute and and show you kind of the utility of gmrs radio if i'm out here uh here you go look at that that's an incredible view right and if my family's down there camp somewhere anywhere down there and i'm up here scouting for deer or skiing or whatever hiking by myself which i am you know, I'm I'm armed to have bear spray, but communication is actually pretty, pretty incredible. Oh, don't mind that thing. That's my ham radio antenna. Um, so GMRS, if you have the license, you can really communicate a long ways out. Um, but here's a couple things. I just want to show you a couple things you need to know when programming these radios. Now, first things you need to learn about are uh, squelch and tones and all that. A lot of, you'll hear things like privacy tones, PL tones, privacy line, privacy tone concept uh, really implies that you're not going to be bothered by somebody else's nonsense unless you happen to be talking uh, on the same, what people call them, sub-channels or whatever. And what they are is tones or uh, continuous tone coded squelch system, which is CTCSS, which you'll see on your radio. Uh, unless you're talking on that same frequency, that same frequency in hertz, uh, you shouldn't be hearing other people. So, um, but when you have those off and you're just running the normal frequency, say FRS or GMRS channel six, um, you'll hear everybody. So keep that in mind if you want to like keep the nuisance down, but also keep in mind that your conversations are not private. And all I have to do to figure out which subtone or which privacy tone you're using, all I have to do is hit the scan feature with this radio. Uh, and I want to show you how to do that too. So uh, that might be a little tougher. I'll probably have to wait till uh, I can get some help, somebody else on a GMRS radio to, to show you how that works. But that's a pretty cool feature. So anyway, here we go. All right, so turn the sucker on. There, the lower band is on 003 and the upper one is on 018. 003 uh, conveniently corresponds with um, the keypad number 003, which will take me to channel three. Pretty cool, pretty handy shortcut, right? Now, if I'm looking to set up, uh, use a privacy tone, if you will, Let's go into CTCSS or DCS. Uh, I recommend using DCS. You're less likely to hear people on those. Uh, a lot of people don't know about them. So you wanna go into your menu. So, okay, so when you see RX and TX, uh, see those? These are what we, this is what we need mostly on this radio. Uh, transmit is TX and receive is RX. RX, not as in your prescription, RX for receive so sorry this is unstable <laughs> holding it because i didn't want to bring the tripod up here anyway go back into the menu because it will time out and i want to set this supposing i'm talking on you know channel three with somebody um and we're using let's uh just for kicks let's go into dcs this is digital coded squelch and instead of using uh continuous tone this actually has a bit stream which breaks open the squelch rather than the continuous tone that breaks open the squelch. Now, when a sound traveling on the airwaves, a voice or whatever, is uh, um, hits your radio, it breaks the squelch and the radio opens it up, turning on your speaker. 
It's simple as that. Um, and there's so much documentation about this, and I encourage anyone to read about this stuff. It's really useful. If you're a GMRS user or a ham radio user, you need to know about tones. It's just, it's just stuff. It's good stuff. Um, anyway, so let's turn on DCS. So I hit the, uh, the green button, the menu button, again. And now my lower bar is highlighted. You have to act quickly or else it'll turn off. And so my transmit is on. Now I'm just going to set it at 31. Now that means I push the menu button again in order to program it. Now when I hit transmit, it's going to hit transmit out on channel 3 with the DCS code of 031N. Um, now I will post a link to a chart <clears throat> below that shows you what that translates to on say a Cobra or a Midland that has DCS but shows it as one, two, three, or four. Um, I know I've, I've done a video on that and I'll actually put that video uh, link right here. See that top right? There you go. Um, all right, so now I'm going to go back in there because it timed out and I want to go back to receive DCS so I can do, um, so I can actually hear the person I'm talking with. Now there's a lot of codes. There's like 81 codes or something in the DCS menu where there's only 50 in the CTCSS. Um, all right, so in a menu, and there we go. And so when I toggle up to transmit DCS, toggle down to receive DCS, I have 031N. Um, now it's just important to know that every radio in your group will need to be programmed or you're not gonna hear one person. And that could be a very important conversation, especially out here. So um, this is just the really important stuff about this radio. Uh, let's go back here and I'm going to back us out. So in order to clear this, press it multiple times to off. And then go up to transmit and then to off. And in order to get that black bar, which allows me to toggle the codes, I'm pressing that menu button. See that black bar you can program? And now black bar is gone. So in order to do that, just remember you're pressing that green menu button. In order to exit from menu, you can just let the radio hang out or you can press that. Notice that you'll see the DCS uh, notation at the top of the screen goes away. I don't know if you could see that here. So. Um, when you're using GMRS, there's not a lot else that you need to know about on these radios other than your power. So right now, you can see that L there, top left. That L is low power. Um, and that low power is what my transmit. And actually, I think it's supposed to be right around one watt. And then in order to toggle, if you haven't done the firmware update on this, download that from Radiodity and get it installed using... Um, a Baofeng uh, programming cable. Um, in order to change power, you actually find the lock key, the, the key, lock key, the key, the key key, the asterisk key, and watch this. Press that. High. So now technically, according to the manufacturer's specification, I should be at five watts transmit power. So that allows you to toggle. Now, if you didn't do the firmware update, you can't do that, um, which is just get that firmware update going. And if you've got one recently, it should be able to do that. But if not, do the firmware update. Um, so other than that, that's a great, this has been a great radio. The other thing obviously that I love about it is the USB-C charging. I mean, like, come on. That means this can go anywhere with me with relatively relative ease. <clears throat> um, so uh, as far as getting into programming, um, that's really what you need to know. And if you go into the repeater functions up here, you're going to use those same <clears throat> same features in order to program the tones for the repeater. Now, a lot of time when you're programming a repeater for GMRS or HAM, you're only programming the transmit tone and you're using whatever uh, configuration the repeater set is set up to, whether it's CTCSS tone or the DCS. Um, just make sure you know how to do that. <clears throat> uh, very few of them will you need to set a receive programming for the uh, privacy line or PL tone or code or whatever. Um, so just keep that in mind. Going through here, let's uh, let's scan up a little bit. 
and you get to 22. Now we're into repeaters. And so um, this shows you up there a positive sign, a plus sign. That positive is the offset. Now, <clears throat> the offset's pre-programmed for these things, so you don't really need to worry about that, and I don't think you can literally change those. But now I press the menu button, the green button, and to, um, here you go. Here's my transmit DCS, transmit CTCSS. Say my repeater requires a uh, tone of 88.5. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit my menu button, and I've got my black bar on, and then I can scroll up using the arrow keys to 88.5, and uh, there we go. And then hit the menu key again, and then now this is ready to use with that particular repeater. Um, but again, you need to identify, say on mygmrs.com, uh, if you can use that repeater and sign up on that website using your GMRS call sign, which if you don't have a GMRS call sign, you should get one because they're only 35 bucks, uh, or they soon will be. I don't know, I paid 70 for mine, I don't, I don't care. I, I just think it's worth having. Um, anyway, so do that, and uh, you need the call sign to get on GMRS website, GMRS uh, kind of repeater, mygmrs.com. So repeater number three is set for that tone. What's another cool feature here is I push the menu button, and I wanna go back and program this. Say, say it's actually like a privacy tone number 29, okay? Which translates to 179.9 in the Hertz, because we're programming this in Hertz because this is uh, a little less user-friendly radio than say like a Cobra. Um, but more advanced, means you a little bit more functionality for you. So hit that menu button. Let's go in there and change this feature from 88.5. This is really cool. If you know your tone, 179.9 menu. And it's programmed. All right, one more time. So if I need to, I can actually punch in the code. So maybe go back to 88.5 menu. Now that's set. Now, the crazy thing is, it will allow you to punch in. Now, this is an accurate tone. I know that. Hit the menu. That's programmed. Go up, go down. Let's program one like 179.5. Now, let's exit out of here. Press that again. You shouldn't be able to do that because those tones aren't identified by other radios. Um, but again, that does make this a more advanced feature, but also these tones aren't acknowledged by the, C by the FCC, so be wary of making up your own tones. Um, and when you scroll down, it'll just reset in that case, so let's turn this off. Anyway, um, that's doing a repeater function, a low power to high power, same thing, hit the key feature, and you can see that H and L change there on top left. Um, and then what I also really dig about this is the weather feature. So all you have to do is press your exit button, the cloud, press that, hold down. All right, I'm at almost 11,000 feet. All right, yeah, to exit, you hold down on that same key. So. To enter the weather channels, you hold down on that wet on the uh, that little rain cloud weather key right there. See that? Hold down, and to exit out of it, you hold down. Um, at this elevation, I picked up all of the weather stations. Um, so that little radio is really a powerful unit if you know how to use it. Uh, and I do want to do a series of videos to make sure I'm getting the point across on the GM30 um, because I, I think those of you who are getting into these radios, you need to know generally what to look for rather than kind of um, trying to follow the manual because the manuals are really confusing. I didn't really use the manual for this. I, uh, I identified the menus that make sense for the use of the radio and I went with that. And uh, some of the ham radios are a little bit more complicated and those are, you need to know a few extra features with those, especially like the DTMF codes and how you can use those with repeaters. You're not going to be doing that with GMRS. Um, if you are a radio person, GMRS is fun, but you're not going to have the same experience in the uh, kind of the technical aspect with radio as you would with ham radio. Um, 
So keep that in mind. I encourage you all to get a ham radio license. But if you don't, if you just want to use these radios, use them up. But please, please get that license so that you don't get in trouble with the FCC. The FCC does monitor frequencies, especially uh, near areas of high use. You know, just, I guess the idea is mind your business and don't get in trouble. So anyhow, I am going to head down off this mountain. I hope that was really, I hope, I really hope that was helpful and a little touch of programming here. Um, so anyway, GM30, Radiotity GM30. Don't forget to uh, carry your bear spray out here on trail and uh, take care. Bye.